Alex Trebek honored with Forever Stamp. Watch believed to have been eaten by a cow turns up 50 years later. Drift bottle from 1961 washes up near Boston. And a Japanese man grows extra lucky 63 leaf clover. All this and more coming up on The Talking Groose. The Groose. Oreo went after both Oreos and chocolate cake. Um, it's my kind of bear. Yeah. I'm, I, I, does it look like I missed many times of eating Oreos and chocolate cake? <laughs> mm-hmm. The co host, better known as Rich. When they're having a bad day at the museum, is it a complete shit show? <sighs> No, that's that's what they present, you know, on Mondays and Tuesdays. Oh. <laughs> in 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 the, uh, the the Puseum Theater. The Talking Groose, bringing you the less serious side of the news. Brought to you from the Rocket Courier Studios in Tempe, Arizona. Now your host, the Groose. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Talking Groose. And our Fourth of July episode. We're coming to you from. Independence Hall. They're currently signing the con- the uh, the uh, Declaration of Independence behind us. The the barrister is here to be the master of ceremonies. I'm I'm yeah I, I I'm in full I'm in full 1700s regalia right now. I mean I I feel like I could board a vessel with my blunderbuss and. Get scurvy? Get scurvy, yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But anyways, we've uh, we've had a few articles uh, last time, uh, over the last couple episodes, about, about lizards, I mean, not lizards, but about zoo things. Things gotta, that have yeah. ha- happened in the zoo. I mean, um, now we got a, 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 another one, and, and I, I might have to go stop it. What is this? The zoo is in what, Tennessee? Or is it, which oh this Nashville Zoo? No Nashville, yeah, yeah, yeah. I might have to go to the Nashville Zoo to go see this one day on on your drive back. On my drive back, yeah, across the country. So let's go ahead and get on with this uh, with the story about lizards. The Nashville Zoo has announced the hatching of rare Amazon lizards. Insert Jeff Bezos joke here. (laughs) 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 The Nashville Zoo announced it has become. The first accredited... Were they delivered, were they delivered via Prime? Uh, something like that. They had to pay extra, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're not members, right? Right. They're okay. non-member price. Uh, <laughs> the Nashville Zoo announced it's become the first accredited facility in the United States to hatch crocodile tegu lizards. That must be like, you know, the special Prime level, the tegu level. Yeah, it could be. It's a... <laughs> Let me go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and go get. Well, let's cut to a picture of the lizards. Um, here we go. Go ahead and uh, go go on with the story. The zoo said on social media that its herpetology team again, uh, another funny word, oversaw the hatching of two crocodile tegus or tegus, the first of their species to be hatched at any zoo accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Crocodile tegus are native to the Amazon Basin, which is what, like in Seattle or something? I uh, Yeah, where, probably, where, where, probably, because, I mean, that's where Amazon's from, right, so, right. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's right there in the middle of the, uh, the, the the shipping center. It is, yeah. I mean, we got one out here in uh, in Mesa, I mean. And there's one out there's west, There's one too. out in Chandler, and there's one out on the west side, so we could be here, the right, Amazon right. Basin. Yeah, that's true. Uh, not much is known about this elusive species, and is able to be and uh, being able to breed them in a zoo setting will help us learn more about them and their reproductive biology. The post said they can take a couple of years to reach adult size, at which point they will likely be placed on exhibit in unseen new world. Oh well, then I guess I won't be able to go see them. Hey, oh, I guess because well. they're got to be adult size. They said before they put them on display. Oh, and it's an unseen new world anyway. So yeah. Is that go strange in blind? new worlds? Uh, I don't know. I just figured you had to go in blind. Well, that, that could have been. Driving your Amazon private uh, electric truck. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I did a little bit of time working for a thrift store. And uh, 
there were some interesting things that always would would get donated. I've heard a lot of different things come up in in thrift stores. Like I the 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 the, the neatest thing that I ever got. Now we got people would donate old cameras from like the early 1900s. I mean, pretty much worthless. Right. Um, not even in the collector market because they, they made so many of them. But the the coolest thing that I would say that I ever saw come through was a a phone book. I believe it was for Sacramento in 1943, and it was in perfect condition. Wow. I mean, it was really cool. I mean, it's not as cool as what we what we stick what's it in a Ziploc bag to make it in that, that yeah something pristine like that. condition. I don't know, but it was just and, and you could tell it was used. It had back in the day, like people would write notes on their phone book and right. stuff. There were handwritten notes, and it was really cool, but not as cool as this. Yeah, this would be a cool find. Three ninety nine thrift store find turns out to be a nearly two thousand year old Mayan vase. A vase purchased for three ninety nine at a Maryland thrift store turned out to be a nearly two thousand year old Mayan artifact. Anna Lee Dozier of Washington said she was shopping at the two A thrift store in Clinton when her attention was grabbed by an unusual vase. If she was in Clinton, I'm sure she was grabbed by more than an unusual <laughs> vase. <laughs> it was Mar- uh, hold on. Where, where, where's our where's our writ? that was Maryland though not oh. not uh, not um, Arkansas. Uh, well, I mean, you know, they're all... In or there. Alabama. Where was he governor? He was Arkansas. Arkansas, yeah. I don't know. They live in New York, and they're practically always in in, uh, in D.C. now. But anyway, Anyways. it looked oldish, but I thought maybe 20, 30 years old and some kind of there's a there's a picture of There's a picture of the vase, everybody. I mean, it... it it, it it doesn't look like... Yeah, it does look like something. I mean... It, it looks like something you would put out in your... It, like in front of your door or by your door and have a plant growing especially out of it. here in arizona it looks yeah, like I a mean, vase that, yeah yeah it's it looks like just a, a, a like a, the navajos would make or yeah. something yeah so uh she thought it was about 20 to 30 years old and some kind of tourist reproduction thing so she brought it home uh she was visiting mexico on a work trip earlier this year when she noticed some items on display at the museum of anthropology uh that bore a startling resemblance to the vase she purchased for 3.99 she spoke with a museum official who recommended she contact the Mex- Mexican embassy when she returned home. Uh, she shared photos of the dimensions of the vase with the embassy, oh, the photos and the dimensions of the vase with the embassy, embassy, and the item was identified as a Mayan artifact dating from AD 200 to 800. Wow. 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 Yeah. <laughs> 200. So that's, yeah, that's like, Forever yeah. ago. Yeah. Dozier and her family returned the vase to the Mexican ambassador Esteban Moctezuma Barragon. Well, if it's Montezuma, he might be related to no, that's Moctezuma. Oh, Moctezuma. Uh, yeah, no end. But I yeah. was going to say, if it was Montezuma, he might have been related to the guy who, uh, oh. one of the guys who made the vase. Uh, or, or, or the castle here in the. Oh, yeah, that's uh, right. Montezuma's like, castle or down yeah. near Casa Grande. No, it's not near Casa Grande. It's up near um, Montezuma's castle. You go. No, uh, Montezuma's revenge is on the way north. Or Montezuma's revenge. I had Montezuma's revenge the other day, folks, and it wasn't pleasant. Yeah, it's up. Uh, it's up uh, by Sholo. Then what's that one down in? That's uh, uh, that's the Casa Grande ruins. Ruins. Oh, duh. Okay. Anyways. It's been a long day. Yeah. Um, I'm thrilled to have played a part in its repra- repatriation story. I would like it to go back to its rightful place and to where it belongs, she said. But I also want it out of my home because I have three little boys and I've been petrified. Um, well, it's gone now, but I was petrified. After that 2,000 years, I would be the one to wreck it. <laughs> that would have happened in my house. If you're going to go big, uh-huh. go big or go home. Right. You know. Officials said the vase will eventually have a new home at a Mexican museum. Another thrift store vase purchased for three ninety nine from a Goodwill store in Virginia was auctioned last year for over one hundred and seven thousand dollars when it was why, found to be designed. Why can't I find those things? I know, yeah, uh, by Carlo Scarpa or for fame for uh, famed Italian company Vanini in nineteen forty two. So wow, um, wow! Uh, I, I think we might have to do a thrift store trip one of these days. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll pass. Um, <laughs> You know, and uh, we, we we've uh, we've covered also stories about things turning up, but you know, I I 
this next one, how? I mean, go on. It, it went through a time warp. Let's do the time warp again. (laughs) Watch believed to have been eaten by a cow turns up 50 years later. Hmm. Didn't look like it had any crap on it. No. (laughs) It looks better than Ken did. (laughs) Right, yeah. After being down in the sewer, I mean. Yeah. Ken and the unforeseen Dora the Explorer doll. Yeah, I mean. (laughs) Uh, A British farmer was reunited with his Rolex watch 50 years after it was believed to have been become a meal for a hungry cow. Are are you sure it's not a Timex? Took a lick and keep on ticking? Exactly, yeah. Took a poop and kept on trooping? (laughs) (laughs) James Steele, 95, said he bought the Rolex shortly after his 21st birthday in 1950. But he lost it about twenty years later while working on his Shropshire. Here, here's a picture England of the. Here's the picture of the Rolex. Um, it looks in great condition. Yep. I mean, it's uh, looks like an old Rolex. It looks like an old Rolex. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's it's it. I, I don't go on. I don't know if they said it was still going working or. Uh, Steele said he searched the fields for the watch, but only uh, his only lead was a nearby cow. The cow could have eaten it with a mouthful of grass, the vet said. Moo. Don't give up your day job. <laughs> the... Here we go. They came to work again. Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys for coming to work. We we, 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 we paid them. We appreciate you. We, we, we paid them in the usual cricket feed, whatever that is. Um, the Small insects. Oh, okay. Well, usually I, I've delivered crickets before that were... Meals for other, other small things. Yeah. <laughs> the watch has now resurfaced 50 years later after Steele's son gave the treasure hunter Liam King permission to use his metal detector to search for old coins on the property. It was unclear whether the watch, which is now, which now has a green tint to its face, had indeed passed through a bovine's digestive tract. I feel like I've passed through a bovine's di- digestive tract sometimes. I. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know. It's been a long week. Um, no. I was quite pleased because I never thought I would see the watch again, Steele said, but I've got it now. I only have half the bracelet. The other half must have disintegrated. He said the watch is not in working the band. order. Yeah. The yeah. band. The bracelet. Um, uh, he said the watch is not working order, but it did avoid rusting over the years. I'm, that's amazing that it's not in working order. You, it's all mechanical. Mm. You think it would work, regardless. Yes, even if they wound it up and, you know. Was... Maybe the spring broke or something. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, go on. That's it. That's it? That's it. Oh. Well, I thought there was more. It's a shitty story, but somebody had to tell it. Yeah, that's a good, <laughs> good point. Um, now we uh, have a bear story. Yeah, we got bears again. Uh you know, this one actually is stealing a picnic basket in a sort of roundabout way. But, uh, you know, I, I'm the bears. I, once again, they're very highly evolved creatures that we don't. We we, uh, we need to get like a, a little clip to play like a, a Yogi the Bear. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Yo, I mean, they're very Yogi the Bearish, you know. Yeah. So, anyways, let's go ahead. There's a video here. So, let me go ahead and get the video up here, and uh, then we'll get back to the story, okay? So that was uh, that was very cool. Uh, the, the bear just the bear went up and he just knew exactly what he wanted. I'll take a picnic basket. I'll take a nice chest. <laughs> a ahead. black bear was caught on camera in California. Where else? Stealing a cooler from the back of a truck and settling in to eat lunch. I guess uh, groceries have gotten even too expensive for yeah, the bears to go shopping. <laughs> yeah, the bears are stealing it now. We already <laughs> learned that with the cake, the Oreos, the chicken. I right, mean, right, yeah. I've Barry Meitinger, 
said he spotted the scene unfolding outside his Tahoe City cabin and recorded video as the bear walked off with the cooler while stunned workers remodeling balconies in the neighborhood watched from a distance. The bear got the cooler and ate the entire lunch by the deck. <laughs> well, he popped the cooler right open. and yeah. <laughs> That. That yeah. now. First a refrigerator door, now a cooler. Um, he said the workers, Meidinger, said the workers were what able to recover. are they going to get next? Their empty cooler after a neighbor chased the bear into the nearby woods. The incident comes just a few days after a black bear in Sierra Madre, which I believe was the story that we covered last time. Yeah, there was. was. blamed for five break-ins in a two-hour period. Yep. And uh, it says one of the homes entered by the bear was occupied at the time, but the woman inside was able to safely lock herself into a bedroom until the animal left bearing all of her oreos <laughs> the end <laughs> yeah um uh, uh bears the, the, uh, you know it's funny because now the bears are out they're out of hibernation they're out summers here spring's gone summer we're hearing a lot more about bears i wonder if the raccoons are like hiding you know they're not out stealing doordash or going to mcdonald's uh, the the raccoons are just like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna sort of fall back for a while. I, mean, I don't know, just a thought. Yeah, yeah. You know, did did we lose our raccoon story? Yeah, we we lost it. Oh, okay. So speaking of hibernating, um, <laughs> we, we've got a story about a drift bottle. Yeah, and we covered some uh, some stories that they were trying. They tried back. It, it was some in kids England. in England. Yeah, yeah, did it. But this is actually a scientific study that was done for the bottle. It wasn't a... It, it even says, break this bottle in the picture. It, yeah. Well, and here, there, let me just... There, here comes... There's the picture of it, guys. So go on with the story here about this bottle, and then... Uh, then First, it's got a, a story from X, formerly Twitter, that uh, it says, this drift bottle was recently found near Boston. Researchers discovered that the bottle was one of five released more than 60 years ago off the western side of... Machias Seal Island is what I'm going to say that's pronounced that. A uh, message and, and in a bottle. And once again, this is why you read the stories and yes, not me. Yes. A message in a bottle launched from an island between the United message States and Canada. In a bottle. I, I, I like the Van Halen version better. <laughs> I like the original. Oh, no. Uh, I'll Stink, send uh, a message in a oh, bottle. Oh, that one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, no, I'm thinking message in a bottle with, uh, what's his Sting, name? Sting, police. yeah. Yeah. So, all right, got to sit up straight for this one. Uh, the, the, the bottle was launched from an island between the U.S. and Canada, and it turned up 63 years later near Boston. Fisheries and Oceans Canada Maritimes uh, said, Near Boston. Yeah, in a social media post that... Uh, that the bottle in the note was inside a drift bottle used to track surface currents. Um, starting in 1922, the researchers tracked surface currents by releasing bottles into the ocean, relying on people to let them know when and where the bottles were found. This old-school technology only helped researchers understand the recovery locations and the dates. I can guarantee you none of the researchers that launched that bottle are still alive. <laughs> if they are... <laughs> uh, they're uh it'll be it'll be a guinness world record uh, yeah if yeah, they are they, if they, they are they'll, they'll, they'll be the oldest scientists still yeah. living. <laughs> the oldest scientists alive the bottle one of five launched in 1961 from machias seal island a disputed island on the bay of fundy how do you dispute an island i don't know it's, it's my either, island yeah whose island is it <laughs> uh uh, it was recently found on the northern tip of Cape Cod. Uh, the the bottle contained a note promising a one dollar reward. Wow, they didn't realize when this was going to be found. The <laughs> bottle's probably not even worth a dollar. Actually, you know, the bottle itself with the message is probably worth more way than more than a dollar anymore. Yeah. yeah. So the bottle contained a note promising a one dollar reward. Everybody rush for, rush find the rest of these bottles. Uh, if the finder reported the bottle's location to research, researchers, it was unclear whether the offer remains valid. Uh, I, with with uh, interest and you know um, that, that that could be yeah, like a down payment on a we house. We could now. we could figure that one out and see what the dollars was worth back in what is it? It was launched in what nineteen sixty one. Sixty one. Yeah. 
it's it will be a lot, but not that much. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so we uh we we love covering stories with Tesla. Love it. Yeah. I, yeah. The uh, but we we do love Elon. But Elon, you're great, but we're not a big fan of your cars. <laughs> yeah, your cars, ah, you know, your cyber truck. I really wonder what's going on with that one. Yeah, yeah. Did, did I send you the the the, um, or did you send me? What? I sent you the one about it's the Pontiac Aztec and an eight bit video game. Right, with yeah. PlayStation One graphics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, anyways, let's go ahead and we're gonna. There, it's a short video here on it, uh, and. Uh, <laughs> It's actually hilarious. Okay, so everybody, it's uh, what the it's a Tesla Tesla self a self driving Tesla hits a parked police car. So here we go. Well, there we go. I, I, I want to buy a Tesla just for that, just so I could try to hit a parked police car. I know. Yeah. <laughs> or you know, you, Doc Brown needs to, to, to reinvent those in the time machine. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you know, you know, though, the, uh, the first, uh, the, uh, that would be cool. What they, they redid back to the future, like a reboot. And they, they made the, uh, the, the time machine instead of a DeLorean, a cyber truck. Oh yeah, <laughs> but, but you know, did you know that Christine was actually the uh, the first self driving car with the uh, option with the uh, with the feature of catching fire before Tesla did started a trend, huh? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Anyways, <laughs> um, kind of like your T shirt there. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know. Okay, I don't know if any of you saw that or not. I'm. Well, the, the self-driving cars here, the Waymos, um, yeah. I know when they were testing those, or maybe they, they, they weren't calling them a Waymo yet. They were calling them something else. I, I don't remember what they were calling them. But they we, we have a light rail here in Phoenix. You know, oh, yeah, they, that's right. They ran into, they ran ran into, into the light rail. Back, yeah. back you know, when... Uh, when old, they started it. When they started old, uh, the... Barry Young always wanted to call it the Phoenix area rapid transit yeah. or the fart. Or fart, yeah. <laughs> um, um, P-H-A-R-T. Yeah. yeah. But you you ever gone through a drive through and you know they tell you the price of something and you're just like ah, that that that's complete garbage. Yeah, but you just pay it anyways and you move on. Yeah, you, you don't you know throw it back at people. No, no, but but apparently the next the 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 next people the next article somebody did throw it back at them. Um, once again, little video here. We're giving we're well, giving the co-host a bit of a break from uh, actually having to read. Well, um, uh, well, disclaimer: I, I worked in drive through at McDonald's as a teenager, and where was this hammer then? Yeah, I would have loved Especially to have found when those it. Drunken idiots used to come oh, through ow. at midnight and Ooh, fifty Big Macs. <laughs> I would have thrown the spatula at him i would have just went at the back grabbed the spatula and just been no, the, the grease traps on the side oh the god <laughs> oh. i i i wanted to gag during what those things oh my god so anyways, let's get to the video here real quick of this one <coughs> allowed to respond when um, there is danger in ways other than crime. I think the conversation needs to change from what did she do to deserve that to why did he think that that was at all appropriate and what expect what what response was he expecting? I've talked to now three or four different officers. No one has said a single thing to me about what I've done. It's all been about, let's try our hardest to keep him away. The majority of men that pull up are kind, respectful, normal people that aren't looking at this as a opportunity to get my bad day out. 
Okay. There wow. Was a lot there. <laughs> that was, <laughs> you know, but what she did, I would have loved to do, and and what she did, I would, I would love to have done it in my career in grocery. You know, somebody bitches, but I would just love to throw like a head of lettuce at somebody, or a can <laughs> of soup at them. Get that can off the top of the shelf there. Yeah, Oops, exactly. sorry about that. <laughs> you know, I got hit in the head with a uh, with a can of soda the other day. Ouch. Well, no, luckily it was a soft drink. I thought maybe that's what made your hair sprout out at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, hey, well, that could have been too. <laughs> that could have definitely been so, uh, the been barista part of it. Uh, there. Be, besides being, um, uh, heavily emo, I don't know. <laughs> she, she, she was, uh, she was definitely um, unafraid to show her. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, she. It did it like she t- took care of it. I mean, bam, well, done. She she obviously, uh, um, I don't know. I uh, just people that that get tattoos on their face really don't tend to take crap for any, from that, anybody. Because and, if I were to get a tattoo on my face, that would freaking hurt. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, you know, um, I wonder if the guy. I mean, the guy shouldn't have done what he did, but yeah, I wonder if he's got any repercussions because. What he did was kind of superficial. In a way, it was assault, what he did. Yeah, and then she... She took it to the next level. She, she took it to the next level, and she destroyed property. Well, let's hope the guy had full coverage glass. Right. You know, then it would be an easy one to take care of. <laughs> um, Is he going to get his 50 free dinners from the, some restaurant? Yeah. Wherever this <laughs> and get his $100 back or right, whatever. Right, right, You know, You know, it's... Uh, when I saw this next article, all I could think of was uh, the uh, the skit from Saturday Night Live, Celebrity Jeopardy. Oh, yeah. And all I could think of hearing was... Uh, the was guy playing the Sean guy Connery. Playing Sean Connery going, we meet again, Trebek. <laughs> yeah. But your mother did it. <laughs> you, need to, you need to get Jeopardy music and put it in here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, anyways, you know, so let me ask you... Uh, uh, what American or what Canadian game show host has just been issued a forever stamp? Would it be Alex Trebek? <laughs> Wrong. It's supposed to be who is Alex Trebek? Oh, right. Okay. Folks. It was in the uh, form of a the, question. The, it was the, in the form of a question. The co-host was never intelligent enough to watch Jeopardy. I watched Jeopardy every day. But could you school. answer the questions? Yeah. <laughs> I uh yeah. He uh, answered the questions only after he saw the answer. Oh, that's what I was that's exactly what I would have written down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to strangle you with that wig, I swear. <laughs> I might um, be into that. You never know. <laughs> yes, thank you for coming to work today. <laughs> Go on. So the question. Oh, I see. It even says here, question, Alex Trebek. Uh, it should That's be. the question. <laughs> on Friday's is a, Alex Trebek? On Friday's episode of Jeff, Jeopardy, new host Ken Jennings announced that the U.S. Postal Service were, will issue a forever stamp honoring the former host concurrent with the show's 60th Diamond Celebration launched earlier this year. Pre-sales for the stamp begin Friday at USPS.com. That might be one I have to pick up. I would actually pick. I don't do a lot of mailing, so I wouldn't use it. I, I like Alex Trebek. But I thought, yeah, Trebek was cool. And 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 the, the, the parody of Trebek was even funnier. <laughs> Will <It> Ferrell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be, between uh, between um, the guy that did Connery and, uh, and Norm, uh, McDonald Norm McDonald playing as Burt Reynolds. Reynolds. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my so. God. Anyways, go on. Here's a picture while while the co-host is is getting his uh, act together. Here's a picture. An, of, an uh, event occurred at Sony Picture Studios in Culver City, California, with Jennings, Jean Trebek, uh, the, the widow, and Michael Elston, secretary of the Board of Governors of the USPS. Trebek was a naturalized citizen from Canada. He died in 2020 after a 37-year run as host of the syndicated show. You know, he he actually said just before he after he was diagnosed with 
cancer that got him. I can't remember what cancer it was, but but he actually did a press release and he said that he would he's going to fight it out because he just signed it. Right, other, he wanted to finish his contract. Yeah, he wanted to finish his contract yeah. before before he died. So the grid of 20 identical stamps resembles the array of video monitors that form the game board, as you can see in the picture. Um, Greg's counting. It's a good thing it doesn't go higher than 20. There's only 16 in (laughs) there. He's only got so many fingers and toes over here. Um, On the stamp is written the prompt, this naturalized citizen, uh, this naturalized U.S. citizen, hosted the quiz show Jeopardy for 37 seasons. And underneath, upside down, is the correct response, who is Alex Trebek? On the stamp pane, relevant category headers appear at the top of I, each I column. Get, I get the... You get the... <laughs> Actually, I think... <laughs> is from Jeopardy. Either that... Oh, it's from Family Feud, too. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of game yeah. shows use butter, buzzers. So, on the stamp pane, the uh, relevant category headers appear at the top of each column of stamps, and to the left is a photograph of, of Trebek with a portion of the Jeopardy set behind him. I think it's a pretty cool stamp. It's a it good, pretty good way to honor a pretty good. Yeah, guy. no, yeah, Trebek was was wonderful. He I was mean, Trebek is Trebek is like um, uh, Pat Sajak, Pat Sajak, uh, Bob Barker. Yeah. Even though Barker had a lot of little bit of scandal, but Barker said Bob Barker. I mean, you couldn't go wrong. It's Bob Barker. No, no. <laughs> I mean, Bob Barker. Yeah, and and you could you couldn't go wrong if you're a good looking woman that <laughs> point, pointed at products and new yeah, cars. Why not? So you you know, have you ever, I mean, ever wanted to go? I wonder if those highway signs ever get misspelled. I mean, I've I've gone through it, and I've been like going. Sometimes you look at it like there's there's a street here out in East Mesa, Crismond. Everybody, you know, I'm like, shouldn't that be Crimson? But or or in or in Chandler, uh, Queen Creek, Germain. Oh yeah, it's spelled German. Yeah, with two N's. Yeah, and everybody says Germain, and at first I was like German Street. Why do they call it Germain? But it, it's just what they call it. Well, it's and, like if you go to if you if you're not from here, you go to uh, Prescott, right. but if you're from here, you go to Prescott. Right. Or, you know, oh, you live in Mesa? No, I live in Mesa. <laughs> uh, I mean, or, or, and, uh, uh, the Tony who works for, uh, uh, works with Wayne, her, her husband here w- with me, she was, she's from Oregon okay. and, and, and lived in Utah for a long time. And she didn't know how to say Tempe when she first moved here. She thought it was, I, Tempe or something like that. the way she said I'm like uh, Tempe. <laughs> so well, it, it is also you can tell when somebody's not from from an area. Uh, the like uh, we have Pinal County, they call it Pinal. Penal. Well, yeah. She 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 actually asked me, is that Penal County? I'm like, no, it's Pinal. <laughs> yeah, but people will call it Pinal. P oh, right. you know P I N A L Pinal instead of Pinal. Right. But anyways, go on here. So, in uh, Pennsylvania, there is a misspelled highway sign directed drivers, uh, directing drivers to Center Tolfilla, or Central Philadelphia, if you know how to read dyslexia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, here's a picture of the misspelling. Um, <laughs> you think, but it's a government operation. You think that they would actually have the um, spell check? <laughs> I don't know. I've done deliveries to the to uh, the, the highway department here. The the uh, and, and what was it? A dot. Um, yeah. That that Dave's dad used to work for. Yeah. When I've done deliveries to them before, I'm like, wow, this is quite the backwards operation and then dave's dad kind of proved it to me well of course he told me (laughs) anyways go on the pennsylvania department of transportation i guess that would be p (laughs) dot anyway (laughs) half a cricket there Drivers on uh, the pennsylvania department of transportation apologize for a highway sign that misspelled the word central as center tall 
The drivers on Cotman Avenue in northeast Philadelphia noticed the new sign directing travelers to southbound Interstate 95 read Center Toll Phila. And now, how would they have misspelt the name for intercourse? Don't want to know. It's a city and it's a town in Pennsylvania. Well, it does say chest there on the picture. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> Center Toll Chest. Like, hey. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And the photos of the sign went viral uh, quickly on Monday. PennDOT, oh, not PDOT, whatever. PennDOT apologized Tuesday on social media. We were so focused on getting this done and reopening the 95 Cotman ramp that we moved a little too quickly and forgot to proofread. Or our our proofreader was dyslexic. <laughs> well, it could have been that too, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, Philadelphia, the Post said, you know, well, you know. <laughs> They've been saying sorry to Philadelphia since the seventies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but also, you know, maybe maybe they were hanging the the cheese and the meat up the grease pole. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That could have been could have been that had one too many uh, 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 Pennsylvania ales on their way up the yeah. pole. <laughs> <laughs> they should have put the pole there with the meat up there, and they could have switched the letters. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, finish up. So. They they have corrected the sign, and it will take you to Central Philadelphia now. Instead of sen- Center Toll. Center Toll. Yes. All right. Well, once again, we're, now that the less serious side of the news is wrapped up, uh, and like always, we have uh, some wonderful world records to go with. Not many world records this, this uh, last couple weeks between episodes. Yeah, it's coming up on 4th of July. Everybody's on vacation for the summer. Yeah, they're like, you know, it's summer. I'm sure David Rush was at it again. Oh, yeah, Rush definitely was at it again. Um, with that, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get to Strange World Records. <laughs> everybody now on to our strange world records uh you, so there weren't many world records this week that came out and uh very interesting ones you know are... yeah really fun um you know i had i didn't well, did i have yeah i did have one as a kid i actually bought one as an adult because it was really fun you just bought it because of toy story <laughs> man maybe even before that but uh mr potato head you ever have a Mr. Potato Head? Yeah. I loved Mr. Potato Head. Did you know that the original Mr. Potato Head, all they did is they sold the uh, the parts, and then you actually had to furnish the real potato. I, I might have heard that somewhere. I don't know. But anyway, so let's go on here. Uh, we're going to go to a short little... Well, go ahead and start the article here. Sure. Okay. Uh, man assembles Mr. Potato Head in record... Breaking 5.15 seconds. Wow. Toy Story version would be proud. <laughs> <laughs> a 20-year-old Northern Ireland... Oh, no wonder he was 20, you know. Well, there Still you have living it. in mom's basement. In Northern together, Ireland. Mr. Potato Head. He broke a spudsational Guinness World Record by assembling a Mr. Potato Head toy in 5.15 seconds. County Antrim resident Declan McFerrin... Sounds like Declan. S- uh, no, don't worry. Be happy, Declan. <laughs> Mc- uh, <laughs> that's Bobby McFerrin. Um, said he spent four hours refining his technique for attaching all they, the features. They, they could be related. Related. Hmm, you never know. No, I think Bobby spelled Ooh, it differently. Once again, you made it to almost the, the the end of the show before sniffing. I know. Damn allergies. Um, Declan McFerrin said he spent four hours refining his technique. How, uh, <laughs> Mr. Potato Head's nose in three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's like the Flash putting it together. Put on um, the angry eyes. <laughs> Put the angry eyes on. <laughs> Have you seen the commercial where they do the potato? They're they're doing the. Uh, is it like um, oh where they they say there's two types of people in the. You know, there's there's the French fryers and there's the tot heads and they show, and then they they've got um, tater tot fly, fries now at uh, what's the drive-in restaurant with the used to have the skating bellhop thingies, ladies. 
Sonic. Sonic, yeah. I wanted to say rallies, but it's not rally. Yeah. So Sonic, yeah, they have a commercial, and then um, and, you know now we we've got these these tot fries or whatever they call them, and they make everybody happy. And then they g- cut to the crowd, and Mr. Potato Head standing there. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll have to look that one up. Full it, it, they're doing like a like a uh, like a um, like a uh, infomercial almost, mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and and they're talking up on stage, and they they what, they both have microphones. All right, on. let's go ahead and cut to the video of this kid doing this really so, quick here. Oh come on! <laughs> it's Mr. Potato Head and his bucket of farts. Like smart faces make a like smart farts. <laughs> Mr. Potato Head and his bucket of farts. A million silly faces, it's the place to start. Put them all together, then take them all apart. Put them all together, then take them all apart. It's Mr. Potato Head and his bucket of parts. Buckets of parts for everyone. Mr. Potato Head and his bucket of parts, new from Play School. Okay, that was actually quite impressive. I'm still telling you. I, anyways, go on with it. With the flash meets Mr. Potato Head. Um, That's why so. they call him the streak. <laughs> this guy here, success uh, started, refined his technique for attaching all the features to the popular plastic toy before successfully shaving 0.28 seconds off the record, previously set by Malaysian serial record breaker Lim Kai Yi in 2022. Thank God he's not going for the uh, the the record of records being held because you could not pronounce his name every episode. Lim Kai Yi. Yeah. Uh huh. Kai Yi. You know, yeah. Okay. Uh, I had seen or owned a Mr. Potato Head since uh, since I was a child. Uh huh. Sure. However, Wait, I was in a little Wayne's World reference. I'll have the cream of some young guy. <laughs> Ribbed for her pleasure. Ew. Ew. Uh, I was enticed to break the rec- by the record and gave it my best try. And my to pl- my pleasant surprise, I managed to break the record. McFerrin told the Guinness World Records. I'm sure the adjudicators, our favorite people. He credited his success to his speedy technique. He must be like 30-second man in bed or something. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> it, was, I, it was to start with the body, hat, and legs, as all three pieces could be put together simultaneously, he said. Then I decided it would be best to put his eyes in with my non-dominant hand, whilst simultaneously lifting his nose and scooping his mustache onto the nose piece in one swift motion. Therefore, the eyes, mustache, and nose will all be put in on one same time. That would then leave me with the ears and arms. Sorry, I was trying to do like the Micro Machines guy. I forget his name. John Machida. There you go. McFerrin said he is now looking at what other records he can break with his John Machida back in the 80s held the world record for the fastest stalker. Yeah, and he did he did the micro machines. He did a lot of other commercials in the eighties when we were growing up. He was also the transformer. Better voice the transformer known as Blur. Oh, that makes sense. So McFerrin said he's now looking at what other records he could break with his dexterity. Breaking this record created a spark in me. Uh oh, we got David Rush part two. Ooh. <laughs> He's only got 279 to go. Um, breaking yeah. <laughs> this record created a spark in me, and I aim to hold a few more in the near future. I've always dreamt of being a record holder at something. I'm quite ridiculous. I'm quite a ridiculous person, so this title is very fitting and honestly one of my best achievements. <sighs> yeah, we were going to do the record breaking thing. We, we still are at some point, but we're not doing it as one of our best achievements. God, I hope not. Yeah, I know. I. Um... <laughs> It's Super Mr. Potato Head. I I, got to show you that commercial later. Anyway. Anyway, so they've, uh, you know, you've heard the saying, the luck of the Irish, or luck of the Irish. Mm -hmm. This is more like the luck luck of the Japanese. Japanese, Yeah, Yeah. exactly where I was going with that one. Because, I mean, and and then you got to, then you got to love, what is it, uh, genetic engineering also. (laughs) That, and then... (laughs) Well, they, they've got little tiny sticky notes, too. <laughs> yeah, that's even better. Go on. <laughs> so a uh, Japanese man has grown an extra lucky 63-leaf clover. Uh, fit that into a song. Um, a yeah. Japanese man borrowed some of the luck of the Irish and broke They're a magically Guinness. delicious. <laughs> a 63-leaf clover. Hold on. It's going to take a little while to produce that for Lucky Charms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yoshiharu Watanabe, 45 started cross-pollinating clovers, that just sounds wrong, at his 
Nasushio Barra home in 2012 with an aim toward breaking the world record. Since the number of leaves has increased year by year, I've been aiming for the Guinness World Records title ever since, he told them and their glorious adjudicators. So 59 years then. <laughs> <laughs> Watanabe said he used a combination of letting his clover patches pollinate naturally and hand pollinating those with the most leaves. Wow, there's so many jokes. That, that's, yeah. <laughs> you that's, you go hand pollinate your yeah, leaves on I, your I own go, time. Yeah, go, don't, don't bring us into it, please. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> please don't videotape your procedure. Yeah, he said I, his I, methods <laughs> weren't always successful. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, if you're hand pollinating, it's not always going to be <laughs> successful, anyways. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if at first you don't succeed, <laughs> try, try again. Sometimes the number of leaves can go down, or sometimes you can end up with a normal three leaf clover. We know that genetics are involved in a high number of leaves, yet we don't exactly know how it works. Watanabe's prize clover Two. has 63 leaves, beating the previous Two. record of 56. To what? The second time you snorted. Yeah. He, he said he was over. Oh, wait, wait. Now you made me lose my. <laughs> made me lose my place. <laughs> Watanabe's prize clover is 63 leaves, beating the previous record of 56 set by fellow Japan res resident Shigeo Obara in 2009. Well, he sounded a little bit of Irish there, Obara. Now oh, there's no apostrophe in it. Well, I'm just saying. Uh, he said he was overjoyed to discover his clover had taken the record. People say that a four-leaf clover brings you happiness, so it would be great if this 63-leaf clover would... Oh, there's a picture of the clover, guys. Yeah, it would I bring mean, surprise and pleasure to people, or it would just make them say, look at that freaking mutant clover. <laughs> yeah, that that's what I would say, because that thing, I mean, I want to actually know, how do they get the uh, the the post-it notes that small? The, the, yeah, that must be, you know, Guinness World Record for the smallest post-it. Yeah, I would, <laughs> is, is uh, 3M Mont part of that? Uh, you know, I mean... Yeah. They make the post-it notes, so, I mean, maybe... And who had the tiny little hands to write the numbers that small? Well, a Japanese woman. <laughs> or a Japanese dude. You Ooh. said it, not me. So, anybody, <laughs> please do not leave comments that I said that. It's him. It's all him. <laughs> Remember the name of the show, folks. <laughs> yes, and I did not say that, though. <laughs> okay. So, David Rush, once again... No 63-leaf clovers here, but, you know. But yeah. once again, David Rush. David Rush, please leave Mr. Potato Head alone and no cross-pollinating clovers, and we're good. With your hands. <laughs> or uh, anything else. Or anything else. <laughs> <laughs> so David Rush is now uh, 170 what? One, it says 177, but we've got three stories, so I'm guessing he's at around 179. Yeah, I believe so. So... Uh, when we last left David Rush, he was at 176. <laughs> what are you looking for? <clears throat> I don't know. Something uh, something uh, viable to go with that. No, no, no. Stop. Stop clapping for us, people. Uh, so when we last left David Rush, he was at Record 176. He's got to do this one, too. I'm sorry, it just goes along with it. I don't think so. But anyways, <laughs> he'll go on with his 70, 177th. David Rush reclaims, reclaims, wow, behind the back catches title for 177th world record. Well, what was what was he catching behind the back? Oh, frisbees was the last one. He uh, has sixty three leaf clovers, <laughs> Mister Potato Heads. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Serial record breaker David Rush earned his one hundred seventy seventh concurrently held Guinness World Record by recapturing the title for the most tennis balls caught behind the back in one minute. Team of two. Rush of Boise, Idaho, and now one of our favorite people to cover, and frequent collaborator Jonathan Hollywood Hannon previously set the record in 2023 when Hannon threw the tennis balls over Rush's head and he caught 22 of them behind his back in the allotted time. 
here's a picture of him uh, catching the tennis balls behind his back there. I mean, it, I, I think they do this all in the same gymnasium. Every time, I, every time you see him, it's, it's always that same gymnasium. Well, they are in Idaho. Yeah, so. they probably have one, <laughs> one gymnasium per town. <laughs> that, that was like, you know, we went to Seton High School. They didn't even have a gym, so they use everybody's around there. So yeah. when they finally built it, you know, woo, one gym. Uh, <laughs> Idaho had them beat at the time. Yeah. <laughs> Their record was later broken by a team who achieved 25 catches in one minute. Rush and Hannon recently recaptured their title before an audience at the Michigan School. Oh, this was... Oh, you did this in Michigan. Uh, can you break a world's record in a second state? Hmm. Mm. Can, can, can they have the world's record for doing it in Idaho and the world's record for doing it in Michigan? Let me think about that. Adjudicators? Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, the pair managed 26 catches, beating the previous record by a single catch. Uh, this was at the Michigan School where Hannon's children are students. Rush now concurrently holds 177 records, nearing his goal of 181, which would make him the holder of the most concurrent Guinness World Records. So 177. So, on to the next. So, he's three away from the tie and four away from the win. Yep. We need a head-on competition between him and Silvio. But Silvio, S- we make a plea to you. Silvio, come out of the dark, man. Please. C- come out, wherever you are. Please. We, <laughs> we need you to break one more so this can we, keep we, going on. We like David Rush, but we, he needs some competition here. Yeah, he's, he's getting a little running, too confident. He's running away with it, guys. Right, right. He's, he's... Silvio, get to getting <laughs> now. I'm asking you. I'm begging you. We are pleading with you. So anyway, so Rush does it again. He he uh, he breaks his own breaks fist bumping his record. own fist bumping record. So I mean, here let, let's see here. Here we go. Here we go. I feel like I'm playing with my two-year-old I, I, grandson. <laughs> I, I feel like I was playing rock and sock and robots, you know. Uh, or, or was it like Atari boxing? Where you oh, yeah. Doom. Doom. Okay. yeah. Anyways, go on. <laughs> so, Serial Guinness world record breaker David Rush broke his own record for the second time by fist bumping a fellow YouTuber 397s in uh, si- not 397 times in 30 seconds. <laughs> Take two. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Rush originally broke the record with neighbor Joey Hannon managing 273 fist bumps in the allotted time, and he broke his own record when he and Howie Mandel fist bumped. Wow. Was yeah. Howie Mandel, did he have a latex glove over his head? Uh, or, or over his hands. Oh, well, man, it could be. <laughs> Isn't he a germaphobe? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, he broke it with Howie Mandel they, when they fist bumped 380 times on an episode of America's Got Talent. So I guess maybe that's where David Rush started getting notor- notoriety. <laughs> it could be. Rush broke the record yet again with his grandson. No, just kidding. Uh, during an appearance on YouTuber Dr. Mike Potts, Mike's podcast, this time fist bumping 397 times in 30 seconds. <laughs> And, is, is and there, like, they, there they are hitting the 397th time. That, that, that seems like a bad game of bloody knuckles or something. I don't That's know. what I was thinking. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, did they like, I mean, did they get like a, a, a bunch of that uh, bag fist bump, bump calluses? Yeah. Did they put like bag bomb all over the their <laughs> hand, their knuckles after the fact? They're, they're raw. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, whew. Rush said taking the record from himself didn't add to his total, but it left him at uh, and left him at 177. So he didn't actually hit 178 here. No, oh. where's the where you're right there. La, 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 la. I don't know what these buttons are. Sorry, people. Um, We've only been on the yeah, air six months. Six months and. <laughs> Well, anyway, he's attempting to reach a total of 181, but, you know, he went and wasted his time breaking a record he already broke, geez, (laughs) Uh, to hold the most concurrent Guinness World Records titles in the world. All right, so then that takes us to the last one. Last but not least. The most current David Rush record. And this was 
we're recording this on June 28th, so the week before 4th of July, and this is from three days ago. Idaho man topples cans with water pistol to break world record. That'd be a fun one. Yeah, I think it would be a blast. That's one that I could actually try. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and show the video to everybody of of Rush doing this, and uh, and uh, we'll go ahead and get back. It'd be a super soaker. Can cut through steel or moving car, but your average square gun can barely move a can, which is what makes this record nearly impossible. Okay, just kidding. It should be easy. Rocco Mercurio currently holds the record at 5.93 seconds, but I have been training for years on and off to break this record. My to-do list goes like this. Find a gun. Check. Drink 10 Dr. Peppers. Check. Burn off the caffeine. Check. Okay, I'm rested now and ready to practice. Think about the pace here. I literally have to click that trigger twice per second and aim it accurately to break this record. I also have to put enough power into that squirt to get the can to knock over. The first practice there was nine seconds, but that's the way life goes. You practice, you're not good at something to start with, but you can get better at it over time if you don't give up. You've gotta be comfortable with failure and experiment and learn from that failure because failure is simply an opportunity to improve. That's how new skills are learned. I'm perfecting my technique and I got it down to five seconds with all 10 cans toppled. This makes me comfortable enough to schedule a record attempt. That means I gotta get all the witnesses, the timers, the location set up, and go out and break this record. And I wanna make sure I get it because I don't wanna get everybody there and then miss my goal. With that in mind, I realized I'd practiced so much that there was a lot of water on the floor I gotta clean up. I thought it was ready and it was record day. The cans were set up precisely, the gun was filled, the witnesses were there, the timer was there, and after a three, two, one go, I aimed and fired and a trickle of water bounced off of the cans. I needed more power. I tried again but then I missed too many times. I tried again and again and again. Sometimes the cans didn't even fall off the table. The water was so thick that I had to dry it off because otherwise the cans would suction themselves to the table. Fighting on the 10th try, the cans fell in record time, but I wanted to go faster. On the 11th try, after a three, two, one go, I shot and I shot and I shot and over two cans fell per second, breaking this record with 4.92 seconds for my 170th Guinness World Records title on track to hold the most at 181. My name is David Rush, and I try to break the Guinness World Records title every week. All right. So, yeah, I um, I would love to try that myself. That, that reminds me of, remember when we were kids? Uh... Wait, everybody, here's a story from the co-host's past. <laughs> So, remember the gotcha commercials when we were kids with Jim McMahon when he was the quarterback for the Bears? Oh, yeah. And he was, gotcha. And he, yeah. That's what that reminds me of. Oh. That's it. No, nothing else. <laughs> la, 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 la. Go on. <laughs> David Rush, who is aiming to concurrently hold 181 Guinness World Records to become the world's top record breaker, took the title for the fastest time to topple 10 targets using a water pistol. Yes, yeah, say that 10 times fast. Rush said Guinness World Records. Topple 10 targets, topple 10 targets, topple 10. Oh, okay, I'm done. Shut up. <laughs> Rush said Guinness World Records required him to use a very small water gun, making it difficult enough to... Oh, yeah. No super soaker then. Uh, uh, to get enough power to topple the cans without sacrificing accuracy. So those little 79 cent deals that you yeah. get, it like... Ch -ch 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 -ch. The harder I squeezed, the worse my aim became. <laughs> Was he self-pollinating? <laughs> 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 off track, way, way off track. Okay. Wow. <laughs> the show just went off the rails. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The harder I squeezed, the worse my <laughs> game. <laughs> Rush says he managed to beat the record of 5.93 seconds on his 10th try. <sighs> he squeezed a lot. <laughs> 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 but he oh, the amount of time. the amount of jokes about squeezing and shooting, <laughs> and, and that could be and cross pollinating and cross pollinating. What is it with the end of our shows? I, I don't know. We, we 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 need the Beavis where he, he pulls up, you know, in, in the womb, and, he, and he's the he's the he's the sperm, and he and he 
like picking his own nose with his tail. He's like, hey, how's it going? And and then another sperm bumps him into the egg. <laughs> That's the cross pollination video we need to use. <laughs> but he tried to make one wow. more attempt and achieved a new record of four point <laughs> nine two seconds. Wow. So anyway. So basically he uh he he's a quick shooter. Yeah, something yeah. like that. He's he's Four point nine two second man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that even beats the Motley Crue song Ten Seconds to Love." What is that? That's, that's like a that's like a one pump chuck. <laughs> it's like watching the forty year old virgin the first time he goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I don't know. Is so that, what, is that what, a wrap? What record is that for for Dave? That would be two seventy eight. Then one seventy eight. One so oh. Duh. See, I, I'm so punch drunk from this goofy uh, content that. <laughs> so 178 that that makes him two away from the tie and three from the win. No, I thought it was 181 for Silvio. Sala. No, that's the win. Oh, he's at 180, and so yeah. he, 181 is the win, one that goes over the top. Yeah, okay. so two for the tie, one for the win, three okay. for the win. Yeah. So maybe next episode we will have three for the win. Hopefully. Got Come a on. lot of time on his hands this week, you know, yeah, Fourth of July. Well, he's got a lot of time on his hands. Of course, he's sitting there, uh, you know, squeezing, shooting off a, shooting, off, <laughs> shooting, shooting off, off his water gun <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in four point two seconds. seconds. Yeah, I mean, he has time on his hands. Uh, anyways, uh, everybody, with that, the uh, do you hear the music? I hear the music. I hear the music. I, I... Yeah, <laughs> I hear the music. <laughs> You're doing the same thing. Happy Fourth of July, everybody. Happy Fourth of July, everybody. Remember, like us, subscribe, click the bell button, um, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, uh, Instagram, Facebook, um, TikTok, MySpace, the garbage dump. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, yeah. A little too far back. Yeah. And with that, everybody. you guys all have a happy 4th of July. Be safe out there. Don't blow your hand off with any fireworks. And if you uh, do, send us a video. If you do, yeah, send us a video. It'll <laughs> make fun of you. All right, everybody. You guys have a good time. We'll catch you in... Two and two. There you go.